sons coming on and doing our thing. Do da, do da. Come on around and do that thing. Go with the do da day. Welcome to the replay, viewers. What's up? What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Oh, man. What, 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 what? There we go. What? How many names you got on here? P Pina Lena One. Light, light skin raw doll. I don't even know what that is. What is a light skin raw doll? Mm, let's see what happens. Sending a request. Request game strong. All along. Uh, there's another thingy. Oh. That used to be the song back in the day. Oh, there you are. Hello there. <laughs> I've shown that picture ready, but whatever. <laughs> I was trying to hit that note and let them know that. Oh, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Pretty good. Working them deals and making them bills get paid, right? That's it. I know that's right. I was trying to find one of my little note sheets blank. Give me one second here so I can cheat. Oh, there we go. So I can see what's going on here. Did you throw some numbers on me? What's up? Uh, Destiny's on here too. Hey, hey. Yeah, Um. so you say you're working on a deal and trying to refresh some numbers, huh? Yeah. So um, you say it's got some, this house has some liens on it. What kind of liens is it? So he said it was, he said it was just from her not mowing the grass and things like that. It shouldn't be a problem at all. So did he say a price that he's going to accept for the house? So he he basically I guess the house was in I don't know if he he had to buy it in foreclosure because he said that he only paid $5,000 for the deed. Okay, so he paid five thousand dollars for it, and there's some small liens on it from not cutting grass. Any yeah, he more? said. Sorry, I'm about to get stable. I know I'm moving. I'm sorry. You got any any mortgages or anything like that on there? No mortgages, but he said that the house is four has back taxes for four thousand. I mean forty thousand. Why so much? Forty thousand dollars? That's a lot of yeah. taxes. Where they live I, in New York? No, but it's in the suburbs, so it's in a really nice neighborhood. So, and what does he want for the house? He just wants five thousand for it. it. That's it. He wants five thousand. He says there's forty k in back taxes. What other yep. liens? Or do you know the amounts of the other liens? He said between three to four hundred. So just nominal, just small right. peanuts, water right. off a of dust back. Um, let's see here. So a few hundred and other fees. So he just told you his take home amount right out the gate. Yeah, he said five thousand. He said he just wants what he put in it. Were you able had, to see what he what the tax bill really is? Did you go on to the county website and see what the tax really say that's old? No, I haven't looked that far yet. Yeah, I would suggest going on there to find out what he really owes because he may not know exactly what he owes. And another thing, he may have already went through a tax sale or something. Because sometimes people say, well, they, they bought it at the tax sale. I'm going to try to sell it. Or, you know, people do a lot of slick stuff well, out here. And I kind of I kind of think that's what he did because he said he got a whole portfolio of, like, a whole bunch. So he said he had some that he's never even looked at before. Yeah, this sounds like some. Because I'm like, 40K in back taxes is kind of high. And so if he only wants four or 5000 for himself, um, so is he at, what is he asking you to put it under contract for? Like what, forty five or something, or what? Yeah, he wants it under forty five. But so he, I wrote this stuff down. So he basically said that with the liens and stuff in the house, I guess where, the suburb in Cleveland where it's at, Cleveland, Ohio, where it's at, is when the house has to be renovated, like 
basically cleaned out and make sure everything's like it's supposed to. They want the buyer to put the uh, the amount of renovation money in the escrow. Did you when see they that somewhere or that's something he's told you? That's what he said. Yeah, you need to verify that because trust so, but verify. These people come up with stuff like, where you get that at? Can you show me where you got that at? You know, I want to know. Yeah, so then he said... He said that, so when the buyer would take over the house, that the city is going to come after the buyer, and then that's what... That's not his problem. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? He worried about if, the, if that was true, just say it was true, right? What difference right. does it make to him? That's not his problem. We gonna we want to buy the house, if the numbers make sense. So he said the ARV on this is what? Uh, 100000 100000 And so, ooh, wee, I got a bad pen now. 50 pins and none of them work. ARV, <laughs> 100K, right? So your 100K, you need, what, 70? So, I mean, it looks like a deal on the face of it. So what's the problem? Is it that he wants $2,000 in earnest money? Yeah, so he's saying that he could basically take care of the back end and take care of all the liens and do all the paperwork that needs to be done. So when the buyer comes in, that all he would have to do is just come with the 45, and then that's it. And then, every, then he wouldn't have to worry about putting the money in escrow. He don't have to worry about it anyway, because, I mean, you know, from what I'm saying, this is some kind of special law. I don't know what the laws are there, but I would verify that because um, it sounds fishy to me. It sounds like to me, yeah. lock the thing up for 45000 We go through the process. We send it through. You got a title company or attorneys there? Title companies. Send it to the title company, find out what they say. They'll come back and say, you need to clear this up, this up, this up, and this up to go through this or, you know, have an exception because they can't close it. So, with, um... with the, who does it? Who, when, so I get the contract signed from him and then I take the contract to the title company. And then yeah. the title company will call me back and let me know. So then that's like, what, a couple hundred dollars to process uh, that? It's a title search and it won't cost you anything. The end buyer is going to pay it when they, when they close on it, when you find a buyer. So you shouldn't okay. need any money generally. Now, I don't know, you know, depends on what company you use. Uh, they might ask you for that earnest money. The Let's see, I've used four different ones here, and none of them ever asked for the money, you know, even though it was only yeah. like 100 to $500 on the contract. They never asked for the money. So, I mean, if they did, I have no problem giving it to them. But uh, that thing that he's talking about, give him $2,000, no. We put it in escrow, so, yeah. We'll put it in escrow with two thousand dollars on it if that's what he needs to make him feel better. But in reality, it doesn't um it doesn't have any effect on anything because he's talking about all oh, the buyer, they're gonna come after the buyer. Let him come after the buyer. That's not his problem. That's not his fight to have. Right. He needs to fight the fight he's in, which is this right now, the front end. Whatever come up later for some future buyer, that's their baby to deal with. Don't that make sense? Yeah, because then the title company can let let me know everything that's going on, what is all owed on the house, so then I can let the buyer know and then deal with it that way. Exactly, because other than that, you're going off, you know, kind of hearsay. Oh, yeah, I think I owe this much, and it's a couple hundred dollars on the grass thing, and you get it in escrow, you find out this thing got a, a bank loan that you ain't know about, another loan, somebody took out a, a, a HELOC, a home equity line of credit, you don't even know where all this stuff come from. Title issues. I've lost several deals messing with that. But you find out once you put it in with the title company. So do you have a title company already figured out there that can handle a transaction like that? Yep. So there you go. If they can handle it, get them to sign that contract for 45 You can put it on there. Does your contract state that you giving him $2,000 or giving him the earnest money or are you putting earnest money in escrow? Well, the thing of it is, is he didn't even say he wanted earnest money until he said that if he has to go through and file all this stuff to get the house cleared up for the buyer, minus the tax money, then he wants a $2,000. Other than that, he wasn't saying that he wanted anything for it. Because that doesn't have anything to do with the price. It's just part of the negotiation. Uh, earnest money can be a dollar up to whatever amount. Actually, it don't even have to be money. It just has to be consideration. It don't even really have to be money, but they always just say a, a dollar amount. It doesn't matter how much it is for real. Um, plus, like I say, it's going to go in to the title company like that, and they'll just hold it in escrow. He's not going to get any money from you, so it makes no difference for real. Right. So I didn't, so like I didn't, because I'm still new, so I didn't want him to know how new I was. So I just told him that I usually do the front end where I find everything, and then I, my buyers usually come in with their peoples and then finish everything up. So... Uh. 
Yeah, you could say something like that or just tell them, yeah, we just want to go ahead and get another contract. The only thing, yeah. the only battle it looks like right now that you'll have to fight is the one about the earnest money because that's ridiculous. You know, it's what we need $2,000 for. You don't have to do anything. We're giving you your full asking price of $45,000. we will close this thing up. We're going to, we typically pay the closing costs. Did you say anything about closing costs or anything like that? Nope. So, yeah, you, you know, you tell them, yeah, we'll pay the closing costs and then we'll just put this thing, you know, you can put it in. You can put a hundred dollars on the earnest money for real. You don't really have to go that high. It's unnecessary. I mean, yeah. if they just feel like that's a feeling within them. If you can combat that part of it, it looks like you'll have something going here. And, yeah, uh, so, and with the, um, so even with the repairs, it just looks like the, they're not. The hardwood floors are really nice. Like maybe just need to get finished off. The bathroom repainted, cleaned up. Maybe a new toilet. Maybe new vanity. Little stuff. The kitchen's mm -hmm. not bad. Like, the house isn't bad at all. Like I said, maybe about 15, close to 20, but probably closer to 15. But yeah, they may not you know, need anything, really, you know, or very, you know, very little. So more more so you need that document signed by him. Um, so do you, do you know what you're going to say to him when you speak to him next? No. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. No. So what I, no. So what I was speaking about is just calling him, letting him know, let's get under contract. Um, I'll run the title and we'll go from there. All right. How about we do a role play right now? That'll be even better for you. I'm selling you my house so you can get you some practice. Okay. Say, ah. <laughs> no, I'd be cold calling, so I'm good. All right. So you want to buy my house? So we good with this forty five thousand? You gonna give me the two thousand dollars I asked for? No. How about ten dollars? How about a ten dollar earnest money? Why you want to do that? <laughs> because all you're asking for is five thousand, so I can do the so I could do the two thousand now, and then you can get the rest of the three when we close. Okay, so that sounds good. So uh, what I will say is, when you speak to them, you just you know you just got to let them know that that earnest money is just earnest money. It doesn't affect the deal in the way that he's thinking. Oh, I don't know what he's thinking in his mind. I would ask him, why do you want two thousand dollars in earnest money? That's it's unnecessary. You know, it doesn't affect the deal. Earnest money is just to make the contract or the agreement binding. That's all that earnest money is to do. Not, it doesn't have anything to do with, oh, let's make it a big amount or any right. of that stuff. That's craziness. You know, only time you have to do those big earnest money deposits is if you're using or going through a real estate agent or something like that. They may require that, or if you're doing a REO, bank-owned property, they require usually a $1,000 earnest money. But you're not dealing with that. You're dealing with a private seller, so... Hundred dollars, you know, something like that, and he should be good to go. If you can convince him of that, get him under contract for that forty-five thousand, and uh, you should be good to go. So the big question is, what would you list it as? Um, you say if it's a hundred thousand, depends on how much you want to make. How much do you want to make? Hell, as much <laughs> as I can. What you, you want to get rich, or you just want to make a sum to say I got a deal closed, I got my first deal, yeah, I did it. I mean, I want to make it. I want to make it a. a I want to make it a good deal because this would be my first one. So I want buyers definitely to come back. Well, but I don't, don't want to be greedy, but that's the thing. So say you get it under contract and um, you send it out. So you have any kind of buyers as now? Oh or yeah. Whatever? Oh yeah, and to back up, so I put an ad on Craigslist saying that I buy houses and all this, right? So this gentleman called me last week, and he basically said, like, will he give a fee? Well, I give a fee for people that find houses that people want to sell. And I said, sure. This man has called me with four houses already. And this house right here is one that he found today and called and gave it to me. There so he said, yeah, so he's like, so what do I get out of it? And I'm like, we'll split it down the middle. Like, I'll split it, I'll split a half with them. The first deal, I'll split half with them. Other than that, I'm not sure how I'll do it, but... The first one, yeah, let's both eat off of it. <laughs> well, as long as he do, you know, he brought the deal. If you find a buyer, you know, that's basically a typical JV deal. You know, as long as he, he bring you a real deal. You know, a lot of people say they're going to get deals and they don't bring them. You come to find out that, man, this ain't enough money in here. So, yeah, I mean, it looks like a good deal. I mean, you could put it out for, let's see, you need, let me do this math here. So, you're going to give him 45. He needs about 15K in repairs. So what's that? Sixty plus closing costs, um, and typically a buyer would like to get a what thirty percent discount. So you should you should be able to get 
Uh, let's see. Uh, one hundred. Where my calculator at? That'd be better instead of me trying to do. You know, you know nobody can't do no math. Regular long hand no more. Why are we faking it? Ain't nobody doing no math. It's too easy to pull something out and do it for us. <laughs> exactly. So one hundred k times part seven. That's seventy k minus fifteen in repairs minus your fee. You want to make what? About ten? Oh man, yeah, you're cutting it tight. It's, it's only about a ten thousand dollars spread in there. Yeah, that's what I figured. I figured about fifty five. Yeah, if yeah, if those numbers all make sense. How did you uh, figure out the ARV for it? I looked at comps in the area, houses that sold. Same square footage in the same subdivision. Yep. Okay. So yeah, uh, you could uh, check those. I don't know if I'll tell you that website. I use a couple of different websites actually. I do. But the thing of it is, but see, even with that is, my fee may be lower. Just because it's a forty-five that's already guaranteed that has to come out, so I figure I'll I'll try to do the fifty-five. If it doesn't work that way, then because there's no telling what the liens and stuff will come back, how much that stuff will be, then I may have to mark it down more. Right. What I suggest usually is when I first send out a deal, I send it out at a twenty percent discount first before I do a thirty percent discount, and then okay. like a couple of days go by, you can lower it, maybe a twenty-five percent discount. And then eventually to that thirty percent mark, you know, if you need to. But I never send them out at thirty percent off right out the gate. And this is okay. like a hard to sell area. Is this like a high crime area or anything, or is it just? No, it's really nice. It's a suburbs of. It's like one of the good suburbs in Cleveland. Like it's really nice. Yeah, if it's a really nice area, I would send it out at like a twenty percent discount. So you would take that hundred k times point eight instead of point seven. Let's see here, one hundred k times point eight. Minus 15, they put, oh my God, what did I push? <laughs> I broke the computer. No, all right, try again. 100 times per eight for a 20% discount minus 15K in repairs. That's to get you at 65. So you can send it out at 65. That'll, get, that'll be a 20% discount. See what happens, and somebody make you an offer anywhere between fifty five and sixty five, as long as they can pay the closing costs. Is your contract set up that way? Did they say the buyer pays closing costs? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, as long as you make sure that's all ironed out, and you know, with the end buyer, you should be okay with it. As long as this guy accepts it. As long as we're not putting the cart before the horse. Right. Right. So yeah, if he accepts that at forty five, lock it up and uh, put that thing in the. Uh, to the title company and they'll tell you in a couple of days, you know, if there's liens on it or, you know, once you get it locked up, start advertising it. That's what I would say. Yeah. You know, it's crazy. It's like when this guy that's finding me, finding me these houses, not that I'm asking him because I'm doing my own work, but for some reason, this guy is just like, he he sounds like he's older and I don't know how he's finding these houses, but he's finding them. He even called me before I, I jumped on live with another house. <laughs> oh, wow. And what did he say he wants for them? He just wants the money. He just I mean, basically he, like. He never said how much or anything or. No, he was just like, what will you give me? So the first time he was just like, so what will my fee be? And I was just like, I'll give you half. Woo, you give a lot. I asked, I asked him, what do you want? You know, because he might say, I no. want $500 or $1,000. I don't know. And I think I mean, with yeah. this one, just because the price with this one, because he knows, because he talks to them first. So he knows what the ARV is. He knows all that stuff. But like I said, the right. first one. The first one, I give him some money. Even if I close for fifteen, I just told him that I was gonna try to get at least maybe seven thousand out of it. I didn't tell him the whole I was gonna get t try to get ten out of it. So right. even you never know. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> leave the door open. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it should work out good. I mean, long as this buyer, this uh, seller is willing to comply and sign off on it and put it in, and nothing, any, no surprises come in, or you know, you don't have any issues with marketing and getting it sold, you should be all right. So um, even if, but even if him getting the deed, because he said he has a deed, for him to get the deed, to buy the deed from somewhere, there could be all kinds of stuff on the house. With it could be all doing. kind of crap on there. He might need a, so a quick claim. A quick claim. So you can just People buy do those deed. all the time. It has no protection for the buyer. You just took a house. You assumed it was good, but you don't know what liens and stuff is on the house, or clouds on titles and all kind of crap. That's why the purpose of the title company. That's their whole job. It's to go in there and get all that cleared up and tell you what's going on and give you title insurance. Wow. 
Yeah. So you would think, yeah, but so even going in for this man to go and buy all these houses, you would think that he would have looked into this stuff, right? No? People do all type of stuff. Some people don't know what they're doing. Real estate can be difficult, especially for the untrained brain. You know, like I always say, it's three ways about real estate, cash, credit, and knowledge. Most people want to skip over that knowledge and just say, oh, well, you know, if you know this game, you can do a lot of stuff. You know, you can do quite a bit when you just know the game. But most people don't want to take the time to learn it. They just want to try to get their credit up. Yeah, that's one way to do it. That's fine, but look how hard that is. Yeah, stack up a bunch of money, save money, and buy a house. Mm, that's hard work. When well, you can take two or three weeks, get on that computer and learn this stuff because all the information is here. There's no no secrets yeah. anymore. You yeah. know, I learned a lot of this stuff in a few weeks. You know, it, it didn't take too long. You know, you just add on layers. You just get better and better and better. You get more experience. You learn how to talk to people better. And the next thing you know, you got deals falling in your lap. Like, oh, man, I like this stack right here. <laughs> no, like that's like that's how it feels like. I've really only been at this, I want to say, maybe like three weeks. Probably like, yeah, three weeks. Yeah, I mean, you should be all right. I mean, as long as the, the buyer is compliant and do what they need to do, or the seller is compliant and the buyer is compliant and you bring them together, you eat in the middle, everybody's happy. And that's the whole reason we, we don't, you don't really have to have a title company just to let you know that too. That's not a requirement. It just protects you. Yeah, because I heard, I, I actually talked to a lady that does the recording office in the, at, at our county. And she told me that you could basically come in and fill the paperwork out and do it yourself. You could, but you know, so, why? And then why? Actually, yeah. Yeah. Right. You don't want you want you want to do good transactions with sellers and your buyers. You don't want to come bring some junk on and be like, "Oh, this house got problems." You want to know that before they close. Which a buyer is not going to buy like that. I mean, you might find a sucker, but somebody will buy and say, "Oh, I'll just sign here." You said it's good, and people do it all the time. Don't get me wrong, but I would never be in the middle of a deal like that. You know, right. it's just bad business. You know, because you give somebody some stuff and they come to find out, "Oh, yeah, you got all these liens on it." What you mean? Matter of fact, I got a deal right now that I'm giving back to the, uh, the seller because uh, I, I got the deal in the contract for 13000 I sold it for nineteen five and was ready to go to closing. Come to find out, he's got a $5 million lien on his house. Yeah. On a little How is that possible? House. I don't know. I mean, I think somebody bought it in a package deal and it was attached to some other houses and some estate or, you know, he bought it at a tax sale. Same thing. When you buy these houses at a tax sale and you don't do a thorough title search and make sure this stuff's clean, you don't know what's going to come up. $5 million deed of trust on his paper, mm -hmm. on his paperwork. So we couldn't close it. So he took the house back. He's going to have to go through a quiet title suit, hire an attorney, spend a bunch of money to get all that cleared up. It's not that it can't be done. It can be done when you throw money at anything. But it's like, who wants to work like that? That's work. That's that's headache. When you can just know going in, it's a clean title. We're ready to go to closing. Right. I'm getting my money. So it makes everything a little bit smoother for you. What up, J. Wow. Scott Speaks? Yeah, we're speaking on that real estate. So, yeah, that, um, I mean, I think it'll, it'll work out as long as you go on in there and, um, you know, let, as long as you sign off on that paperwork and that, uh, that earnest money is not a problem. Other than that. So I, just turn in, so I just turn in whatever amount I'm going to do to the title company when I take the contract. Yeah, well, there's two ways you can do it. The way I typically do it is I find a buyer first. I don't know. That's kind of backwards. Some people say you shouldn't do that. You can you can either turn in the uh, paperwork first and let them do the title search if you know something funky like this is going on, and then you know still get your buyer. Just don't do it that way. You could turn in your per your uh, purchase and sales agreement first, and then you know get your buyer. Or you can go ahead and do like I do. I get. My paperwork on the contract, I find a buyer, I get my assignment agreement, and I send those two in with some closing instructions for the title company to go ahead and do the whole thing. So I don't have anything else left to do. But that's just how I do it. I mean, yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. But the only problem you're going to run into is if you do run into any kind of title issues, it can make a hiccup. Yeah, so maybe I may have to do that. I think probably that's probably what I'll have to do, just to see what is on the back end of this house. Yeah, first they'll get that thing on the contract first and uh, put, submit it to the title company. And you should be all right, as long as he signs off and don't have no issues with the earnest money and none of that. You know, so, um, you know, make sure he understands that earnest money doesn't really have any effect on anything. It just binds the contract. That's all the earnest money does. That's it. It don't mean anything. So long as he understands that. 
and then she don't trust you or something. That's when people start saying, oh, I need five grand for it, or I need this or that, or, you know, some funky stuff. Or you're doing a different type of a deal, because I'm doing a deal right now. Uh, it's not going to be earnest money, but it's going to be an $8,000 down payment on a house. It's a $200,000 house, but I'm just going to make that down payment and take over the payments from there and put a tenant buyer in there and make that money that way. That's like a subject to deal. That's a little I more. Want advanced, least, but... I want at least three. I want at least three of those before the end of the year. That's my goal is to get some subject twos. Like that's where it's at. The wholesaling, I just want to get my capital up so I could just go in there and just start knocking them out. Like that's yeah. that's my goal. It makes a big difference. I mean, especially if you get a free house, like what? I can move in there myself. You just got to make those payments, you know, just like anything else. But, uh, you know, it, it's a life changer. You're like, oh, wow, I like this. A free house, almost, you know, even if you got to come out a little bit of money. You, you think about the little bit of money you put into it, it's like, that's nothing. Peanuts. Some and with the subject, do you do the same thing with the title company like you do with wholesaling or no? It's just you and the um, sellers have a contract. And then you just so, go. Yeah, it would be between. Uh, so it's two different sides of it. Mr. Transaction Engineering here, he does all the transactions. What up, bro? So um, <laughs> it's two different ways to do it. So, you know, uh, the first end is you got to you gotta acquire the property before you can do any of that other stuff. You got to get the property. So it's the same thing. Purchase and sales agreement. Get it under contract. You submit it to the title company. They do their title search and all of that stuff. And then you, uh, you go through that way. But, you know, like I say, you might have to uh, take the house subject to the existing fi the existing financing on it. If the financing is good and favorable in your, you know, in your favor, then it's a good deal. But if it's not, leave it alone. Because so some people got adjustable rate mortgages and all type of crazy stuff going on out of them. And, and you, you can find it out be... when you go you can find it out when you go to the title company? Well no. So for to find out exactly about their mortgage, you need to get the release of uh, the uh, release of information authorization okay. letter. So you can talk to the bank on the seller's okay. behalf and they'll send you the whole packet, all that payment history or whatever, you know, they'll give you the information that you'll know what's going on between this seller and this house. You can talk about this loan. You're okay. authorized. You're on the account now. Once you get that paperwork signed off and sent in. So okay. That's only when you're dealing with mortgages and stuff. But some of these houses are free and clear. You'll be surprised. Somebody just have a house free and clear, no mortgage or nothing. Just got junk like this guy with these liens and things. And you can just take the house like that. Yeah. And it really don't matter because if, if that's the lien amount, as long as he accepts your price. Because all those liens and stuff, that comes off seller side anyway. That comes off the seller side of the transaction. So, like, if he didn't tell you that, oh, we got all these liens and stuff, and he just told you, I want 45 for it, and you didn't know, 45, as long as it covers his amount, and you can go to closing and get your money, you good. Okay. So, you know, yeah, he just was open with you. I got a probate that's pending now, and that seems like it's going to be a mess. Two brothers involved. The sister done came in, had the mom sign paperwork while she had dementia, took her life insurance money. What? Yeah. Dang. But it's a, really, it's a really nice house, but what he's asking for is basically what the ARV is, but the house is all original from, like, 1910. So it's like... Need right. <laughs> so do they have a loan on it? No, it's all paid off. Well, they got to come on down off that price. We got to get that price down. That ain't no biggie. You know, you either want to sell it or you want to keep it. You know, yeah, and I it's just two brothers. One, one, lives, one lives in North Carolina. One's here. The one here has just been living in the house. So as soon as he sees that he could get a nice little chunk of change, I could, he's gone. He's gone. He's going to take that money. He's going to go. So, so just I find out what everybody wants. If they all will agree to say, yeah, she wants eight. He wants eight and she wants 10 or whatever. And they all agree. As long as everybody happy, you make a deal, make a happy little marriage. If yeah, I'm, trying to get, one. I'm trying to get that. I'm trying to get that one. The ARV on that one's probably maybe 90. So I'm trying to get that one for at least 25, close to 30. Cause I know that they'll take it and walk away. If they take a cash deal, go on and roll it, roll them up, roll them yeah. up, bowl them up. That's what I say. Unless you want to keep the house for yourself and put it back out on some advanced stuff. But he said, uh-uh, I'm doing me a wholesale deal. No, I told you, I got to do these wholesales because I got this tax, I got this tax delinquency list that I'm trying to, that, that, I'm trying to get on them subject to. I'm trying to throw them some money and, and take the house and, and rent it out. But actually, mm -hmm. I don't want to rent it out because mm -hmm. after listening, after listening to Eddie, I I don't I don't want to do no um rents. I don't do no one rentals. Never do a rental. Lease. I don't want to do a lease purchase. Yeah, lease option, lease purchase. That I wouldn't do that. I don't want to do no more rentals. Never let me do let a me rental. Know. 
I don't know why anybody doing rentals unless you got an apartment complex. Other than that, I ain't doing no rentals. Yeah. Because somebody so got a babysitter. Buy, just want to buy them and just lease them out and just keep doing it that way. That's the, that's the best way to do it. Now, you said you don't want to do a subject two right out the gate. Eddie here, he said he did. His first deal was a subject two. So no, I would do one. I would do one, but I'm, I, well, I'm not against it. I will do one. I've almost came close to one before, but what they owed on the house and what their mortgage payments were for that area, there's no money. Like, it would be, it it's not high. worth it. And then the house was so outdated, so I had to put money into the house. So it wasn't, mm. it wasn't worth it. Yeah. I've learned a lot. I definitely have learned a lot watching you guys. Like I know. You, you've been studying. I see you. You stay woke. You've been staying woke. <laughs> I watch all you guys, the whole circle. I watch everyone. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to be uh, I'm gonna be down there next week in Atlanta, Eddie. Coming down. <laughs> I'm leaving. I'm flying out on Monday. Um, Martin Luther King birthday celebration day, even though his birthday, like, in a couple of days, they just gonna put it on next Monday, all the way out. As so long as I don't have no bad weather come in and then knock on some wood, even though no wood around here, I'm flying up out of this mud. I didn't know you guys even got snow like that. We got eight inches of snow the other day. I had to clean that stuff off. You should have seen my face cleaning that snow off. That's why you guys always talk about us up north. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Y'all get snow there though in uh, Ohio, right? What? Yeah, we're the snow belt. We <laughs> oh, yeah, you can keep all that. I'm good. I'm moving to Florida or Texas or somewhere south where they don't even get that kind of weather. That's my plan. Nah. Man, you got to watch out for them hurricanes. You go ahead and go down there. I know how to leave. They say, what? Hurricane somebody on the way? I'm on vacation going back north. Let's go visit St. Louis. What did you say? They say a warning and you're gone. <laughs> I'm out of here. To I'm like this. Out of there. <laughs> so yeah, I'm not messing around. If they, as soon as something come up, ain't that's what the rich folks do. They live there. Yeah. They be like, "What? It's a hurricane. We leaving. We going out of town for two weeks." And they come back like ain't nothing wrong. I watch them. See, I watch some some heavy hitters out here too. I say, "Oh, how do y'all doing them hurricanes here? They leave town." <laughs> that's what you, you should. Do. <laughs> yeah, you gotta you gotta <laughs> know you what so to do. Much. I don't want to keep you. Thank you so much for coming out and helping me with this. Oh, no problem. Got any other questions? Let me know. I will. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. All right. That's how we do it. Another happy person here. Another deal. We get snow once every five years. What? That's all you get in Atlanta, Eddie? Oh, my goodness. I got to get my snow game up. Yeah, we got yeah, it was about six to eight inches the other day. That snow was the size of my phone. It was that much snow, that much. Like you can really see that much right there. Right there, right there, right there. That's how much snow it was. So I was like, oh, no, nah, man. Think that snow off, it had to go off. But that's how they do it, man. Yeah, but I'll be down in Atlanta. Hopefully y'all got some good weather next week. Come down there. It's going to be nice and warm and sunny, I hope. 80 degrees. It ain't going to be that warm, but I'm dreaming now, right? I'm staying close to the zoo, so I think that's like Midtown or something. I don't know. I don't know nothing about Atlanta, but I'm about to learn. Have to give me a uh, what? I'm give me a either a rental or do something down there. I don't know, but I'm flying out, and I found out I could have got a cheaper flight to Atlanta round trip, two hundred and fifty four dollars round trip. That was cheap for real, but I found out I could have got it less. Oh well, pay the pay the cost to be the boss. That's how we do it. And uh, let's see here. Yep, I'm about to get up out of here and do some more woke stuff. Yeah, exactly. Wow. Any more questions, comments, or concerns before I roll up out of here? Make sure you visit that website right there, Chris Monroe STL. The link's in my bio to get all the connections for the stuff that I use, the calling systems I use, the driving for dollars systems I use. It's got some freebies and stuff in there. The link's in my bio, or you can just go to chrismonroestl.com. And click on that stuff there, and it shows you all the good stuff. Actually, I got another one, too, that I'll be putting on there today or maybe tomorrow for my text message system. I think you get a trial or something with that. But I like to hook it up because I got Deal Machine up in there. Oh, uh, thank you for the kiss. Kisses back. See my kisses? Double kiss. <laughs> all right, family. I'm about to roll and flow. Oh, it's only 6 o'clock here. It's still early. feel like it's late. I'm going to go back and eat some more, get fat on them. 
from the future billionaires, billionaire in the making, Chris Monroe STL on all social media, Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, you name it, at Chris Monroe STL. Do what you do. Be who you be. And I'll see you, you, you right there, before you see me. Peace out.